Hello and welcome. In the previous class, we learned how to go with the manual configuration in a DHCP server. In this class, we'll use the wizard. The process is going to be a lot faster. So let's go to the configuration. So first of all, we're going to make some changes here to our topology. Basically, I'm going to add another switch. And I will connect that switch to the Ether3 in the router. So now we have a new broadcast domain, a new network. The network that I'm going to use here is going to be 192.168.30.24. And I will add two virtual PCs. And those PCs will be connected to that switch. So now we have two more devices here that will be in that network, 30.24. So let's go with the configuration process. So now we only have two steps. The first step is to add an IP on the interface. I'm going to use the first usable IP, and that is 192.168.31.24. So I will go to the router, to IP, and then addresses, and I'm going to add a new IP. So 192.168.31.24. The interface, according to our network diagram, is Ether3. So now we'll click OK. And we have a second local area network. And the next step is going to be to run the wizard. The only requirement to execute the wizard is to have an IP on the interface. So let's go to the router. So we are here on the router. We need to go to IP and then the HCP server. So here we have the server that we created in the previous class. But now, instead of creating every structure manually, we are simply going to use this option, DHCP setup. So if I click there, this is going to show multiple steps that will be requesting the information required to configure a DHCP server. So the first question is, where do you want to run that server? That is on Ether3. So I'm going to select the interface Ether3, and then I will click Next. Now it is asking what the DHCP address space. So this is basically going to IP addresses, it's checking the network, and it's showing the network and the mask. If we don't have an IP, we're going to get an error in that step. So now this is the network, so that's fine. So I will click Next. Now it is asking what's the gateway that you want to deliver or push to the clients. So that's 3.1, basically, is the IP that we have on Ether3. So the router is going here and is taking that value and is putting that value there. So that value is good, so I will click on Next. Now this is showing the range of IPs. You can see that the range is going from dot .2 to dot .254. Basically, it's uh, subtracting the IP that is on Ether3. So I'm going to use the range from 100 to 199. So we can customize that range. Now I can click Next. DNS servers, you can see those two. Those DNS servers are coming from IP DNS. So you see those values that the router has. Basically, the router is going to IP DNS and is taking that information and putting that information there. And now we can click Next. List time, by default, 10 minutes. Let's say that I want to give one day. So I'm going to say 24 hours. Then I can click Next, and now Setup has completed successfully. So that means that now we have the server, we have that DHCP1 server, and that's it. We have configured a DHCP server in that device. So now if we go to those devices here, we can start that virtual PC. And if I go to the console, and we try to get an IP, IP DHCP. You can see that that device is going with the DORA process and it's going to get an IP from that DHCP server. The IP is 199. If I go to the second device, IP DHCP, you can see that this got the 198. So now we have those two devices with dynamic IPs. Those two on the network 30 slash 24 and the two PCs on the right on the network 20/24. So now you know how to configure a DHCP server by using the manual process or by using the wizard. 
Thank you, and I see you in our next class, where we are going to give access to internet to those devices.